Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and well, let's see. We've written equations with one variable. We've solved those equations using addition and subtraction. We've solved them using multiplication and division. Now it's time to write equations with two variables. Let's get started. So today we're writing equations in two variables. First, what exactly are we talking about when we're saying equations in two variables? Well, uh, equations in two variables, that represents two quantities that change in relationship to one another. This word relationship is really important. What that means is as one of the variables change, so does the other variable. They're related to each other. You can't change one and not the other. Um, or you can't change one and the other one not be affected, I should say. Uh, so now, well, what exactly would a solution to an equation like that look like? Well, you've got two variables, so you're going to have two values uh, in your solution. And that solution to an equation in two variables is an ordered pair. Okay. So commonly, like an x, y. Okay. Where each one of these... Uh, values would be would work together as a solution to your to your equation. Um, let's talk a little bit more about what these values are called and what they look like. So the two variables in these types of equations have names. First one we call the independent variable, and that's just a quantity that can change freely. Basically, we choose what that value is for that variable. Okay. Now the second uh, variable we call the dependent variable. And just like the name, uh, the value depends on what the independent variable is. Now that might be a little bit confusing, but uh, for example, here's my favorite mug. Uh, if I have coffee in this mug and I'm drinking some, okay, and I ask you, well, how much coffee is left? You would say, well, it depends. It depends on how much I drank already, right? So in that situation, uh, the dependent variable would be what? Is it how much I've drank or how much is left? Well, the dependent variable would be how much is left because how much is left depends on how much I already drank, right? The independent variable would be how much I drank. Right? I can decide that on my own. I can take one sip, I can take two, I could do the whole thing. Okay. So how much I drink would be independent variable, how much is left would be the dependent variable, because it depends on how much I drink. So hopefully that helps keep them clear. Now we can graph uh, these types of these variables and the solutions uh, as an ordered pair, right? We've graphed ordered pairs before. If you're wondering which one would be the x-axis, which one would be the y. Typically, uh, the independent variable, the one that you choose freely, that would represent your x value on the x-axis. Independent would be like your x value, and your dependent would then be your y. Dependent. Okay, so if you think of an ordered pair, typically you would say your independent value first and then you're dependent. Okay, let's look at an example. All right, example one, tell whether the ordered pair is a solution. So for my first one, y equals 2x, my ordered pair is 3, 6. So I'm going to see if that's a solution. If it's a solution, it should make this equation true, just like in a solution to uh, an equation with just one variable. So to check, all I have to do is substitute. This 3 is my x value. So I'm going to substitute that 3 in there. And this 6 is my y value. So I'm going to substitute it in for y. So when I do that, I'm going to get, uh, I'll do it in red, uh, 6. And the question, is that equal to uh, 2 times, substitute, I need blue, uh, the 3 in for x. So 2 times 3, right? That's the question. Well, 
2 times 3 is 6, so we get 6 is equal to 6, so yes, 3, 6 is a solution to that, uh, that equation. Now, is it the only solution? Right? Uh, that, that's another question. We won't get into that yet, um, but 3, 6 is a solution. So let's do the next one. y equals 4x minus 3. We're asking, is 4, 12, that ordered pair, is it a solution? You can pause the video and try it on your own first. Um, here we go. So 4, again, I'm going to substitute at, that in for my x. 12, I'm going to substitute it in for my y. So I get 12 is equal to, well, that's the question. We're seeing if it is. Uh, 4 times 4. Make sure you use your parentheses, right? If you don't have them, it's going to look like 44. Uh, minus 3. Again, 12, is that equal to, well, 4 times 4 is 16, minus 3, 16 minus 3 is 13, so is that equal to 12? No, they are not equal, which means 4, 12 is not a solution. Okay, let's do another example. All right, here we go with example 2. The equation y equals 128 minus 8x gives the amount y uh, in fluid ounces of milk left in a gallon jug after you pour X amount of cups. Okay. Uh, so first, part A is identify the independent and dependent variables. So again, independent, that's the thing that changes freely. That's the thing that we would decide. Dependent variables depend on what you decide with the independent, what, what you do first with the independent variable. Uh, so sometimes when you're doing this, it's easier to find out the dependent variable first. So in this situation, uh, first, what are our two variables? Well, we've got y and x. Um, what does that x represent? Well, x represents the number of cups of milk that we pour out of the jug. y represents uh, how much is left, the amount y in fluid ounces of milk left. So I'll just write milk, whoops, milk left. So if I think about that, um, you might notice, well then, if we're subtracting 8x, where did that 8 come from? Right? For example, if we have one, we poured one cup, we multiply it by 8. How, why would we multiply it by 8? If you look here, y is in fluid ounces. This is in cups. We're multiplying the amount of cups times 8. That's because there's 8 fluid ounces in a cup. Um, where does that 128 come from? We're starting with that. We're subtracting out how many cups. So if you think, well, what if I didn't pour any, any cups of milk out, right? So if that was zero, um, eight times zero is just zero. So if we're subtracting zero. That basically goes away and we have 128. So that would be the milk left is 128 fluid ounces. That 128 represents how much is in the jug in a full jug. Right? So 128 fluid ounces in one gallon jug. Okay? Um, so that's where those come from. That's where those numbers come from. It, sometimes it helps to know that. So anyway, let's get back to independent dependent variables. What's the thing that depends on the other thing? Do the amount of cups that we choose, that we pour out, does that depend on anything? No, that's, we choose that up to ourselves. How about how much milk is left? Does that depend on anything? Well, yeah. The amount of milk left depends on how many cups of milk we pour out. So that should tell you that the dependent variable is the y. Equals the y, which is the, uh, the milk left. Okay. And the independent, what we choose freely, is how many cups we pour out. So independent, then. That variable is the x variable, and that's the number of cups that we pour out. Okay, so that's part A. Now, part B, how much milk is left after 10 cups? Well, again, 10 cups, that's represented by x in my variable. So if x is equal to 10, all I need to do to find out how much milk is left is substitute. So I'm going to have y is equal to 128 minus 8. I'm going to use my parentheses, uh, 8 times 10 cups. 
Well, order of operations, I'm going to do my multiplication first. Y equals 128 minus 8 times 10 is 80. Now I've got my subtraction. Y equals 48 and units. Remember, Y was in fluid ounces, so 48 fluid ounces of milk left. Okay, as, oh, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't see that. 48 fluid ounces left. Okay, so there's my final answer for B. Here's something to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.